So adapt and overcome. And that's the best advice that I could give to anybody who's in the PC world trying to, you know, make a couple of dollars here and there. And that's what I'm learning to do. So if you've been keeping up with current events, one thing you've noticed is that memory prices have gone up. DDR4 has gone up and DDR5, forget about it. You need to take out a second mortgage to buy that stuff. And now storage drives are slowly starting to uh, climb up on price. And it's unfortunate. If you've been watching the channel, one thing you'll see is that I get out on the Facebook marketplace and even eBay, I go out and I pick up cheap parts, whole computers, cheap computers, Frankenstein them together and make a couple of dollars. But it's a little tough because sometimes you get these parts to Frankenstein together, you might have to buy some memory. You might have to get a new storage drive and that adds up quick. A perfect example was the other day I had to pick up some uh, DDR4 3200 or I needed to pick up some 3200 uh, DDR4 memory for a laptop. Uh, this was something that a customer brought in. It was an upgrade and we needed a 500 gig storage drive. And I think the memory was like almost 80 to hundred dollars. The storage drive was about 60 bucks. So let's say $150 uh, for that upgrade, which is a little spicy. Now, of course the customer has to pay that because that's what they need. But if you're in the predicament like me, where you need to get these for as low as you can, it hurts the profit if you're trying to uh, flip cheap computers. And the prime example is one of the ones that um, I saw a lot in the garage. I call them the DLM specials. They're $200 and they're pretty much basic office machines. I mean, get on the internet, check your email, the Facebook, all that type of stuff, you know, cooking recipes on YouTube or stuff like that. And uh, those computers sell really quick because people just need them for that. But I've been getting a lot of calls for those, you know, cheap computers I've been known for building just based upon um, reputation, word of mouth, all that type of stuff. And I really can't do it no more. And a prime example was I picked up a computer the other day, um, it was for a hundred bucks. It had no storage drive and it had no memory. But I mean, it did have an okay graphics card for what it was. And I think it was a i5 uh, six gen, which I've been getting a lot of, but the memory for that and the storage drive is about 150. It paid hundred dollars for that. So that's $250. So realistically that computer can only sell it for about 300. Now, yes, you can try to get the parts used, but as the new parts continue to rise, the used parts also rise because people realize, hey, my junk is actually worth something. So um, let me get the most I can out of it. So it's been a little tough. Now, one thing I've been doing to kind of help that and at least help people get uh, computers for that price range, um, cheap laptops, which are hit or miss. But the other thing is um, mini PCs. And the price of mini PCs and the performance that you get for some of them are actually really decent. Now, I haven't had a dedicated brand that I've stuck with. It's kind of going for the best uh, bang for the buck. But typically, I give people two options. Hey, you're looking for a PC for XYZ? I send them one that I recommend and they go ahead and buy it. Option number two, I buy it. I charge a small service fee for um, setting it up, accounts, software, all that type of stuff. I give them the option, which most people choose that because they don't want to deal with it. And it actually hasn't been too bad. And yes, it puts us past the $200 DLM special that um, I'm known for selling, but realistically the bang for the buck that you're getting is actually not bad considering the price of things in the market lately. And it's actually worked out because a company reached out to me, Geekom, I think that's how you say them, Geekom. And this is their A5 A series mini PC. This is not a paid sponsorship by no means. They just emailed me and they said, hey, you wanna check this out? I was like, yeah, cool. And um, I'm curious, is this one that I could recommend to my customers or I think it's worth it and all that type of stuff. Taking a look at the specs is not bad. 16 gigs of DDR4, 500 gig M.2. So that's about $150 right there, but you also get the Wi-Fi, um, actually a pretty decent CPU and you know, whatever else it comes with. A Windows activation, that's expensive. And considering the price point that um, it comes in at roughly about $350 and the specs that will give you longevity, I think it's some good bang for the buck. So in this video, let's go ahead and let's dive into this. Let's take a look at it, see what kind of version of Windows 11 it is, upgradableness, the performance of it, and um, See if this is the computer that I will be using when customers ask me, hey, I just need a basic office PC. So let's go ahead, let's dive in. Now, there was a company that I was using for a while, for years, and I no longer use them no more. And if you look back at some of my earlier videos, you might've seen their PC on the bench. Um, in a nutshell, they sent me one of their mini PCs and it was a big disappointment. But I tried to be fair and just kind of review it and give it, um, an opinion of 
what exactly it is and what it's not. And in a nutshell, they wanted me to advertise that thing as a high-end gaming PC, great performance, super duper, which the bang for the buck was not there considering that the price point it was coming in, you could get something a lot better. So long story short, because I didn't want to um, overhype it, oversell it and all that type of stuff, uh, they refused to pay me and I no longer support or ever buy from that company again. So hopefully this is better. All right, so the box, pretty nice. Oh wow, PC's right there. All right, okay, cool. And this is your standard size of your mini PCs. So let's kind of go over the specs, which are a Ryzen 5 7430U, not bad, 16 gigs of sodium DDR4, I believe this is 3200 speeds, and an M.2 512 gig what it comes with thank you for your support thank you for purchasing our products to facilitate your daily life we hope they serve you well hmm that's pretty nice you got a nice little thank you card you know i think like what asus would do that with their graphics card you know thank you so much for paying two thousand dollars for our graphics card you know it's way overpriced but this is sweet uh, Decom A5, let's see what we get. HDMI, nice. And that was the other thing, this other company, they didn't even give you an HDMI cable. Most of these, I would say 90% of them, give you an HDMI cable. A typical power brick with our power connector. We do have the mount so we could hook it up, a VESA mount behind the uh, monitor, which is pretty nice. I do like this. That's actually pretty cool. Let's open this up. I think like this. Oops, I broke it. It's kind of got like this uh, gold pink, like rose gold look. I mean, if you put it behind the monitor and you don't like this color, I guess that's cool. But if not, that's it. USB, headphone jack. We got two C's in the back, two HDMI, two more USB. So plenty of I.O. Okay. The weight. It doesn't feel cheap, I will say that. Ooh, SD card, that I like. Um, that's one thing that I say these mini PCs, all of them should have is an SD card. Just my personal preference. I think that's a good feature. I wanna open this thing up. Let's see what it looks like inside. It looks like we have four Phillips. Oh, thumb capture screws? I will say my unboxing experience with this is so far impressive. Now, how hard is it to take it apart? Oh, sweet, just like that, okay. Yeah, okay. You know, folks, um, I'm liking what I'm seeing. So check this out. <laughs> you could put a two and a half inch drive right over here. That alone is stinking awesome. So that you don't see every day, at least in the ones I've used in the past. The memory, oh, I thought it was 3200. It's 2666, but you get two eight gig sticks of memory dual channel hello that's pretty decent our storage drive pcie gen 3 nvme ssd 512 thermal pad for the m.2 this is aluminum oh yeah kind of acts like a heat sink i like that now there's one two three four a couple more screws if we could take this apart get to the uh cpu put better thermal paste which i have found with um and this is for all different mini pcs if you actually use some decent quality thermal paste, it lowers the temps, gives you a better performance, quieter on the fan, because these things do get a little noisy. But I also found there was one that I had that I actually used that PTM 7950, made a huge difference on it. So maybe I might do that later on. Snaps in, tighten this up. All right, let's plug it up. All right, let's hit the power button. Geekom. 
Let's select the language, continue to English. We are in the US. Yep, more US. Don't need a second layout. I don't have internet. Let's see if it'll let me set this up without a Microsoft account. No, we don't want a password. You don't need to know my privacy, location, all that type of stuff. Oh, folks, that's pretty awesome that they allow you to set this up and not use a Microsoft account. I think that's pretty cool. Might be an older version of Windows, which is why I'm able to get away with it, but I still think that's pretty awesome. All right, it actually wasn't too bad. It actually took less than five minutes to just um, load up Windows. Worked out pretty good. Let's see, any other stuff in here that we need to worry about? Go to Device Manager. So AMD, Radeon, I think it's what, Vega 7? Bluetooth, which is always nice. And for a CPU, 2.3 gigahertz. Oh, nice, Windows 11 Pro. And it's activated. And the reason why I make a big deal out of that is because I've actually bought these things where it's not activated. And the company that I will not make mention of, they claimed for theirs to be activated, it didn't activate, and then when I emailed them their technical support saying, hey, I need an activation, they were gonna charge me $80 for an activation, which was ridiculous on that. I'm impressed with this. Let's go ahead, let's put some drivers, some programs in here, check some temperatures on it, and see how well this thing holds up. So real quick, something I wanted to add it, and this is kind of important because at least when I'm looking up stuff, I always wanna know this information. How in the world do you get into the BIOS? Well, this one's pretty simple. Hit the DEL or the delete key 6,472 times, no more, no less. And it brings you into the BIOS. Good information to know, especially if you wanna change the OS, put Linux or whatever you wanna do in there. Okay, so we're back. All updates are installed, got some programs installed. And I will say this little guy, pretty quick and works very well. So let's go ahead and let's talk about temperatures. So we are running AIDA 64, doing a stress test on it. And as you can see, CPU 93%, memory 95%. And the reason why I'm showing this is because it's not picking up the temperatures properly, only showing 36 degrees. But I did run hardware monitor, and as you can see, spike up to 65 degrees Celsius. And right now just running to test 54 degrees Celsius, which is awesome. And the best part, silent. And that's pretty cool because most of these and other companies that I've dealt with, they're really loud when they're under load and nothing's more annoying than if you're using this just to browse the web, download something, watch a video, movies, or even because you can use these as a home theater PCs and they work great and the fans going 100 miles per hour. So that's pretty awesome and I'm glad it's quiet. Few things I want to kind of go over. First being their website. Typically with mini PCs, you go to their website and they have no information and it's worthless. This one, they actually give you the information. So this is the A5 2025 uh, edition. It tells you the two flavors that it comes in, the 5825U or the 7430U, which we do have, Radeon graphics up to 64 gigs. So it gives you a lot of specific information for it. I think is awesome. But what's better about this is if you go to downloads, and I probably haven't seen this much, has all the drivers you need. Pretty cool. BIOS updates. The last BIOS update was October 9th of 2025. I imagine this thing's up to date. I'd have to double check it on that. But I mean, the fact that you can get the BIOS for it, you can get the drivers for it, user manual. I mean, that's pretty cool that their website is actually useful. So kudos to that. Now, one thing to note, if you want to get the latest and greatest drivers, what you're going to have to do is go to AMD's um, website, graphics, and this is for the graphics card or the iGPU, go to graphics, Radeon RX, RX Vega series, because it's RX Vega 7, and you could type, put in the Radeon 7 over here, and you have the drivers. That way you could have AMD's, uh, whatever you call that, Adrenaline Edition. Yeah, you can tell I'm an NVIDIA guy, because I don't know what that's called. But anywho's, um, I went ahead, and I actually installed that, and I found that under certain games, and I should have benchmarked this, you get probably about 10% uh, better performance if you use AMD's uh, drivers from their website, so something to note. And the same thing for the chipset. You go to their website, AMD drivers, chipset, laptop chipset, AMD Ryzen and Athlon chipset, and just to kind of show you proof of concept, hit Submit, Windows 11, driver, December 10th, 2025. So now you got the latest drivers for your chipset. That's pretty cool. So, so far from my experience on this thing, this thing has been very spiffy. Booting it up, less than five minutes to kind of get it up and running, installing drivers. I mean, even using the internet, 
Um, there's like no hiccups or delays. You go to your favorite website, YouTube, whatever it is. I mean, everything pops up pretty smooth. Let's look up DLM Tech Garage. Hit one of my videos. So what's awesome about this, if you need like a small everyday office PC, and this thing can do some gaming, we'll talk about that in just a sec. I mean, it's spiffy, it's fast, no delays, no hesitations. Let's go ahead, let's take a look at some games. Let's go to Steam. Let's go ahead and let's try Hollow Knight. Now this thing does have Bluetooth, so I do have my Xbox controller hooked up and ready to go. Let's see how well this thing performs, I mean, all right, so for options, and this is Hollow Knight. I mean, you can play this thing on pretty much anything, but still. 1080p, medium settings, and I'm sure I could make it higher. I mean, we're looking at 180 frames per second. So that's actually not bad. There are tons of games like this that you can really play and just have a good time. Uh, we'll try something a little more demanding, but so far, pretty decent, well-rounded machine. So let's go ahead and let's try something a little more beefier and, you know, just see what happens. Tomb Raider, not Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, just the Tomb Raider. Let's go ahead, go to options, let's see what we can do for our graphics. I mean, might be pushing it. Let's go, go with normal, 1080p. Um, actually, you know what? Low. Let's do that. You know what? Um, I'm actually impressed. This thing is actually doing a lot better than I thought. I mean, I really didn't think we'd be able to play this. Now, this is an older game. I forget when this game com came out, but still. 1080p, low settings. We're sitting at about 75 frames per second. The game is smooth, looks good, definitely playable. And when also, another thing to note, um, our temperature is 54 degrees Celsius on the CPU, 49 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Celsius on the GPU. I mean, granted this system is a lot newer than this game, but still, definitely playable not bad i will say i'm impressed it's amazing how computers have come a long way in all these years i mean you pretty much get like a powerful pc in the size of your hand and um i remember pcs used to be the size of the room hard drives were twice as big of it and think in fact i think i have an ibm i think it was an ibm or quantum i have one of those bigfoot hard drives that is like almost twice the size of this and that's just a hard drive and now you have a whole computer in the palm of your hand it's crazy. Think of it this way, it's your typical mechanical drive. And all this does is read and write data. This does the whole thing. So pretty interesting on that. So going back to the original portion of this video, this is kind of going to be my go-to as far as, you know, people looking for um, cheap PCs. The way the prices are now, if I get a cheap PC and I have to buy memory and a storage drive, it's not going to math out right and even then with having to get storage and memory for it it's going to put the pc about 300 dollars, and it might be even something like an i5 8th gen i7 6th gen or something like that when realistically i mean 300 350 dollars, i might be able to put one of those out and sell it with profit i could just go out and recommend something like this to a customer looking for a pc along that price for what they're trying to use it for and this is a better bang for the buck basic cheap office pcs don't think i can do that right now not anymore especially when you have something like this that does the same thing but way better thank you to geekcom for sending this out i'll post links if you're interested and with all that being said comment down below let me know your thoughts concerns criticisms are mini pcs the answer for entry-level budget pcs or cheap office pcs especially when you look at the price of trying to build a computer like that with the way the market is right now what suggestions and your tips do you recommend for circumventing this crazy price uh, situation that we're living in and what are your thoughts on mini pcs if you like this video definitely hit the like button subscribe if you're not and as always we'll see what we come up with next